Hello YouTube, Tech Tips 123 here, and today I'm making a really quick quick start video for uh, anybody that bought a Nintendo Switch uh, from me, either from eBay, YouTube, whatever. If you bought a Switch from me or you did a send-in or whatever, um, I'm just going to go over how I've set everything up, why I've set it up that way, and go over some uh, quick start things like what you should use for custom firmware, what, you what option you should use for stock, and why this middle option is there. I'll go over basically as much as I possibly can with you guys just to give you a little a boost into it so that you're not confused on uh, what's going on. So first things first, um, every time you turn on a console, especially if you got it from me, it will log into this screen. The one thing I want to get, uh, get uh, out of the way is that if you have a fourth option, that means you sent in an unpatched switch and got a mod chip installed or um, you just have an RCM loader or whatever depending on what you ordered from me. So if you have a, th a fourth option, that means you have an um, unpatched console that can run Android, and that's self-explanatory. You click that option, it'll open, uh, basically it'll set up for your Nintendo Switch as a tablet, or not set up, I already set it up, so it'll just launch as if it's an Android tablet. So you get basically to use it as a normal like handheld tablet, and use Shield and whatnot. So that's out of the way for any other, for any light consoles, any V2s, V1s patched, and OLED consoles, you, uh, we can't use Android yet. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever be able to, but for the for right now, there is no Android for patched consoles whatsoever. So, um, so that's out of the way. But if you have it, then obviously just click on it and that's your Android partition. So now, every time you restart your console, it'll go to this. And a little later in the video, I'll also go over how you can set uh, auto boot options. So like ma meaning uh, if you only use CFW, I'm going to show you how to uh, make it so when you press the power button, it'll automatically go to CFW. And then um, I'll also go over the shortcut to basically if you say you select this as auto boot and you want to change it. I'll go over the button combination so that you can get back to the screen so you can change the auto boot settings. But uh, we'll do that a little bit in the video. So first I want to go over what these options mean. So stock OFW, right? Stock OFW is self-explanatory. That's your normal Nintendo Switch. So basically think the easiest way for me to explain it is imagine you have two consoles in this one system, okay? This is a console. This is your stock console, meaning no mods, just so you can go online and play without getting banned or whatever. So you can you you can play your legit games with that like games that you bought and you want to play online. You use this option. This option is your M is your custom firmware on your MUNAND. So uh, just a rough uh, idea on what that is basically. So so an MUNAND is an exact copy of stock OFW. So what they did for safety reasons is they took the stock OFW and they and they make a copy of it or I made a copy of it on the SD card so it's taking all the files from here and putting it on here on the SD card so if anything goes wrong right here right say you mess something up uh, this is on the SD card so all you have to do is you can delete it and then make another copy again you can co make another fresh copy and start over but if you mess this up and you brick it then you're screwed without a NAND backup and sometimes depending on how you updated your console, your NAND backup might not be uh, usable anymore. And I'll go over why that is. That, that's why the second option is here. So under no circumstances, should you be using this option for anything except for updating stock, okay? And again, and you can you should not never update your console through the system settings. So you do, you do not want to go into stock OFW, go into system settings and update. That is not how you update on this. It will make your NAND backup useless. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it, but um, bear with me right now. So this option is only, the only time you go into this is if you need to update this so you can go online. So say uh, right now we're on firmware 15.0.1. So when you get your console, this will be on 15.0.1. If it's on anything lower, you'll be using this option to update stock OFW. So to update this basically, so up, to update... Um, your uh, to update your NAND, right? To update your NAND, there's an app called Daybreak. I'll go over all that in a second, but that's what you use to update. You don't update the normal way. So um, first, let's go over CFW EMUMMC. So say you want, uh, say you want to run all your homebrew apps, everything. That's through this option. So this is where you get where you're on tinfoil, all your homebrew apps, anything that will get you banned, you run on this. So the way that I have set up the console is when you're logged into stock. You, it has access to Nintendo servers, meaning you can go online, you can use Nintendo online, do all that stuff, right? So stock, and then if you're logged into either one of these, it's blocked from Nintendo. So if you're logged into your console using custom firmware, 
I've set it up so that it's only blocking Nintendo, meaning everything else internet related will work. Like you'll be able to connect to Wi-Fi safely, but if you try to open up the eStore or try to use Nintendo online while you're logged into CFW, it will block you. It will automatically be blocked. And ob that's for obvious reasons. If you went on this and you went online, you would get your system banned and then you'll ne you won't even be able to go online with this option. Like, like I said, this is an exact copy. Basically, this is an exact copy on the SD card of your stock OFW, meaning if this goes online, that still has all the stuff needed to ban this side. So this will sell to send telemetry data because it's just an exact copy and that'll get your stock side banned. So I've set it up so you don't have to use 90 DNS, nothing. So on these options, you can literally just connect to Wi-Fi normally and the system is automatically set up with files. So it blocks Nintendo online if you're ever at risk for being banned, meaning if you're in custom firmware, it'll be blocked from Nintendo. Everything else internet will work. But this side is unblocked always. That way for your paid games and stuff, you can go online and play whatever. So this is your stock side. That's a normal switch. This is your CFW custom firmware side. So let's go over the custom firmware stuff. Basically, if you got the system from me, this is what it will look like when you first uh, boot your console. Okay, so if you boot into your CFW, so now we're on the CFW, so we're on the copy that's on the SD card, which is your custom firmware. This is where you want to do everything related to anything. See how I'm connected to the internet, right? So now, since I'm connected to, uh, uh, since I'm logged into custom firmware on Emunan, watch. So if I go to the internet and I do test internet connection, oh, come on, this stupid Wi-Fi sucks. Uh, hold on, let me change the Wi-Fi. I don't care if you guys know the password since uh, this is a guest network and I'm going to change it anyway. I don't know why my guest network just has it. Yeah, there we go. So now it works. It's so weird. I don't understand it. Okay, so uh, and that won't happen to you guys. That's specifically my guest network. I don't know why it's doing that. But yeah, so see that uh, see how we're connected to the internet normally i haven't set any special dns setting or nothing i just connected normally using my password and regular settings but watch what happens if i try to go to nintendo eShop. you see how it doesn't let you so if i do link a nintendo account see how it's blocked it won't let you go on uh, if you're on cfw if you're on custom firmware that won't work but if i go to any apps like say i uh uh, launch uh, homebrew menu. By the way, home the way you launch homebrew menu when you're logged into C uh, logged into CFW is you open album. If you want to open the normal album, just click on it while holding a right bumper. So this so if by hold while holding this, if you press on uh, the album, it'll open up normally. You see, but if you just click on it by itself, it will just it will open. The homebrew menu but if i used any of these apps right i can still go online so basically the only thing like i said is the, that's blocked is specifically nintendo servers while you're on cfw that way your system doesn't send telemetry data of whatever you're doing on this side to nintendo um and you don't, so you don't get banned basically so this has a bunch of apps so there's breeze all-in-one updater cheats updater so um i'm gonna go over cheats updater so cheats updater is to obviously update um, cheats for your uh, games. Cheats Updater only installs uh, cheats for the games that are installed in the console and it also has a little issue. So say um, I op I had three games installed right now. I open Cheats Updater, right? To download and update cheat files, I would press A. See how it says found two um, install titles and then I press quit. So this installed cheats for whatever games I had installed, right? Now what happens is say you install two or three more games and then you go into Cheats Updater and you press A it will still only have found two titles so if you added like three more titles instead of saying five it will still say you only found four so the way to fix that is you basically every time you add a new game you have to come into switch updater or switch cheats updater press x and delete the cheats files for all games right and then return to main menu and then press a again and then the, when it's then this time it'll find the new games that you installed and then install the cheat files for that to open cheats for games, you um, basically open the game, and what you're supposed to press is left bumper down, 
and uh, right stick down. So you saw, you see what happens? So it's left bumper, press down on the D-pad, and then click this, and you'll get this menu right here, right? You, so you'll get the Edison menu. All you need to do is go to Edison, Cheats, and if there's cheats for the games available, it'll pop up here. If it says no cheats have loaded, then you, you'll you have to manually get download the cheats for, uh, for some games, like some new games that come out. Um, Switch cheat updater, it takes a little bit for games to get added on there, but there are ways where you can download cheats and um, add them manually to your atmosphere folder. You can definitely find it online, but I will be making a video on it soon. So um, just bear with me. Okay, and then um, obviously this is RetroArch, so depending on the size SD card you sent, uh, a different uh, version of um, um, RetroArch is set up. Like I have the 20 gigabyte, 40 gigabyte, and 140 gigabyte uh, versions of RetroArch. The and the 20 gigabyte does not include Nintendo 64 or PS1 games. The 40 gigabyte includes um, is includes. Uh, Nintendo 64 games and then the 140 gigabyte includes Nintendo 64 and PS1 games. The PS1 games are massive so that's why if you sent like a 256 gigabyte or 512 gigabyte drive I didn't load I only loaded the 40 gigabyte one for you because uh, it's not it, you, it, it's not worth it to take up 140 gigs of just retro games on when you have such a small uh, SD card. So, um, unless you specifically asked for the biggest library, um, I'm just going to automatically pick the 40 gigabyte if you have anything smaller than 512 gigabyte or smaller. Okay, so as you can see, to run any game, if you want to run a game, you can just click on it and then press run. And there you go. And it runs the game. And another thing is for RetroArch, you also want to open this. So, uh, if you got this system from me, Again, it, it'll be the, uh, if you, you can overclock your system, just be careful with it. Don't overdo it. So, um, you do the same thing. So, to, as you would to open cheats, you would do left bumper, down, uh, down on the D-pad, and then right stick down. And then right here, you would go to sys CL, oh, no, not CL, okay, sys modules, oh, status monitor. For some reason on this console, SysCLK is not working, I'm assuming because, uh, oh yeah, so the problem with the newest firmware right now, so the newest update 15.0.1, if your firmware is on it, if you're emunet, if say you sent your console into me and it was already on 15.0.1, then your um, emunet is also going to be on 15.0.1, which isn't a big deal, but the problem is um that just came out so a lot of homebrew apps have not been updated so sysclk so this system is on 15.0.1 so you see how sysclk so here it's supposed to be your overclock options but they haven't updated this yet for 15.0.1 so you can't use it yet so that, and that's the big issue right now is uh hope like some people will send their consoles in without updating where where they'll be on 14.1.2 and what I'll do is I'll create a copy of, I'll make the emunand when it's on 14.1.2 and leave the emunand on 14.1.2, but I will uh, update the stock NAND to, uh, so the stock CFW, uh, I mean the stock OS, basically meaning unmodded side, will be um, will be updated to 15.0.1, but I, I would have left the emunand side on 14.1.2 just because of this error right now. Because everything works for 14.1.2, but not for 15.0.1. But um, so basically, say you send in a console that was on 14.2.1. What I first do is instead of updating the stock side first, I make a copy. I create the emunand partition while it's on 14.1.2. And then after that's created, then I update the stock uh, firmware. That way, the stock is the stock firmware is on 15.0.1 and the CFW is still on 14. Point uh, 2.1 that way um, you know you can still use all the homebrew apps till they update it but this console was sent in to me and it was already on 15.0.1 so there was no way to downgrade once that happens and I'll go over why you can't downgrade so okay so that goes over this and then there's tinfoil so to add a shop for tinfoil I'm not gonna tell you guys this but there's a way you can add it I just set it up so that there's a little bit it kind of leads you in the right direction so if you open this You'll see welcome detecting that's the that's the game shop get a grab a key by joining the discord server so if you go to this link or if this pops up uh, you'll see it says updating press ok press ok and then go down to q and make sure this is completed then close
close it and then open it again but as i was saying when you open tinfoil um it, it'll pop up with this site you have to basically join a discord and request a key um there's pl plenty of videos out there i might make one eventually but at the moment i don't have the time but if you just follow this and uh just look up a video it's very easy you join the discord you type something in the like the chat like forward slash request like it says right here in the request section and then it'll give you a key that you can type in if you get that key right if you figure it out on your own the way you add the key is uh once you type in the forward slash request or whatever you'll get a little you'll you'll get like something that starts with https then technic.app and whatever all you need to do to add that is go to file browser right highlight file browser press a then press minus and you fill in anything that is shown so anything like so protocol will be https i know that for a fact so you would click on it and then scroll down to https right so whatever you see on the screen like you'll you won't see all these options so on the screen you'll probably see protocol username password and then title so only fill in what they what you see on the screen if there's some, if you don't see anything for a host like then don't fill in anything for host only fill in the ones you want or the ones that it shows on on this uh, on the Discord, and then once it's done, press X to save, right? And then uh, close Tin Four, and then reopen it, and you should have new tabs right here with new games and uh, uh, whatever. It will, you'll have new tabs with the games and rec recommended and whatnot once you do that part. But um, right now, for some reason, once you do that part where you add the Discord, when you open it. For the second time like right now if i had added the store you'll get another pop-up saying that your console has been uh, selected for verification but it'll have instructions where on the same discord you have to basically go to a different tab on the discord type in the code that they give you and then they'll and then that'll verify your console and then when you restart tinfoil again you'll be able to download games and stuff so that's it for that and then uh, let me look at any homebrew so also if you open tinfoil right and you get ssl error so if you open this and you get SSL error, system clock is wrong, make sure you connect it to the internet. Then all you need to do is go to your homebrew menu, then go over to um, to switch time right here, and then press Y, and it'll, it'll uh, set the uh, system clock to whatever your internet is set to. So, if, so it'll set it to the right region automatically, and then you can just close out of it, and then go back to tinfoil, and it'll work. So I'm just going to go over a few things here. So all-in-one switch updater is very helpful. So um, while we're here, let me go over how to update. So say you want to update your uh, update either side. So right now we're going to go over if you want to update your CFW side. So this is the custom firmware side, right? So uh, the Emunan side, sorry. So this is the third option. So say you want to update the third option um, from basically where you do all your CFW. You want to update where tin, the, this OS that we're in right now with Tinfoil and uh, Retroar. The way you would do that is you would go to album, you would go to all-in-one switch updater, right? You would press continue. And then what you would do is you would update these in order. So you would update atmosphere first. So click here and then go through the prompts to press next, next, next. That's done. At the end, it might ask you, do you want to update bootloaders too? If it asks that, press yes. If it doesn't ask that, restart the console, then come back into all-in-one updater and then update bootloader next, which is this one. So Hakate, not Argon, Hakate. So uh, so you have to do these in order. Update atmosphere first. And when you're done update atmosphere, if it pops up automatically saying, do you want to also update bootloaders? Press yes and continue on that. And then, and then once that's done, you can come back here and then go to download firmwares and download a firmware. But again, if it didn't ask you at the end of atmosphere, then update bootloader first, restart again then go back go down to download firmwares and then click um w whichever firmware you're trying to update to so if you just click firmware 15.0.1 right here it'll start downloading it and then once it's done downloading it'll automatically pop up saying do you want to go to daybreak so what will happen is uh, i already have it downloaded which takes a while which is why i already pre-did this so once that happens will happen is if it doesn't automatically open daybreak once the firmware update is downloaded you can uh, manually come here and click daybreak right then click install and then um if i've renamed my f uh, folder so if you used all-in-one updater to download the firmware update it's not going to be called firmware 15.0.1 it's just going to ca be called firmware so just go to the full the firmware folder and then press a on it and as you can see here you can just press continue 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 so first thing continue you want to preserve settings and then you want to do install fat32 plus xfat okay i'm not going to do this because this is already updated 
and then and then that's done so that's how you update your um the third option that's how you update the custom firmware side or the custom firmware side that you're going to be using now say you want to update uh the official side so say there's a new update and your official side obviously needs to be updated to go online right um actually before i say that the cfw side since you're not going online with it whatever firmware it's on it's probably good on that you don't need to update it right so it's generally worse to update like i said this one is on 15.0.1 so if you're on 14.2.1 you don't want to update this you don't want to update your uh um cfw side because either way you're not going online all that'll do is you'll have to now wait and slowly and you'll have to re-update all your homebrew files one by one so it's better to just leave it on whatever i sent it with and not just and not update this side at all until you absolutely need to in the future and i just showed you guys how to do it if you wanted to but you don't want to do it unless you absolutely have to like say you run a game and it's like oh you need firmware whatever then you have to update but right now there's no games like that so there's no point in updating this now say you want to update stock ofw right so you want to update this but you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to go into stock ofw go into system settings and press system update and here's why okay so when when i provide a console i leave a note with the console saying that um there's a folder called nan backup on the sd card to make a copy of it on your pc and then delete it off the sd card okay but so basically um the reason that you don't want to update your stock ofw the normal way right through the system settings is um nintendo basically burns fuses on the cpu if you update normally and what that does is it prevents you from going backwards. So say um, the NAND backup that I left on your SD card is for firmware 15 and you update normally to firmware 16. That will make it so that if you restore from your NAND backup, you won't be able to boot your console. Like the fuses have to basically match. So if you update normally, the fuses will get burnt and that way your NAND backup that I left on the SD card will become useless. So if something ever goes wrong in the future, you can't use that NAND backup. And if you do use that NAND backup, the system will not turn on. And basically you'll be in a brick loop. So what will happen is say um, you forget. So say you accidentally update this normally, something happens and you need to restore and you do restore, um, you will overwrite what's on here. So you won't even be able to restore that. So before you even restore, you'll have to make another NAND backup. So, because if you, if you use that NAND backup and you burn fuses, now you would have overwritten what's on your system and you would have gone back to where to, to a uh, to a previous fuse count and that would that would make it so that you literally your console just won't turn on it'll just it'll just be black screen and if you don't have a NAND backup of a newer firmware made then you're screwed your your system literally got pushed back to a previous firmware and then your whatever firmware it was on got deleted or whatever firmware that it was on that those files got deleted so there's no way to recover from that basically so you never update normally so the only way to update is through custom firmware so this that's why this option is here the only reason this second option is here is because you need to update OFW without burning fuses and the only way to do that is to log into stock OFW using custom firmware and then using either all-in-one updater or daybreak like I just showed you guys uh, to update this so you use the same steps that I just showed you to update this to update this but you use this option instead so if you obviously if you just click this you're not gonna be able to get to home, get to homebrew menu you can't use daybreak or whatever which is why this option is there the only reason this option is there is so you can log into stock ofw with custom firmware go and install it using all in one, uh, go and install the uh, new update using all-in-one updater or uh, daybreak so that's literally the only other reason that you should be clicking on this if you go into this option uh turn your console off immediately and go back into this unless you're updating so just for this tutorial i guess i'll show you guys so I want to update stock OFW. So right now, say my stock OFW is on 14. I can't go online, so it's probably it's basically useless to even have this stock. So I want to update it to go online. So what I would do is I would log into this. And as I said before, while you're logged into either of the last two options, it's automatically blocked from Nintendo, right? But the re but the reason that you don't want to do anything is say you mess around right now, even though you're on. Uh, in, even though Nintendo's blocked, so you mess around with a bunch of custom firmware files, when you log back into the normal stock side, right, the first option, it won't be blocked from Nintendo. So whatever you did while you were in here will 
be sent to Nintendo the second you log into that normal option because that normal option isn't blocking Nintendo anymore. Whatever data you created here, so if you install like a game on this on uh, using this option on here, and then you log back into Stock OFW, you'll see that game in Stock OFW because you're logged into Stock OFW right now just with custom firmware instead of normally. So you never want to do anything on this second option except for going straight to album and then either updating through uh, all-in-one updater or by updating through Daybreak. So um, I would suggest doing all-in-one updater before every update. You should always do update atmosphere, update bootloaders, and then do update firmwares. And you see how this, uh, th this isn't popping up. That's because my internet, I haven't set up the internet on this side. No, back. So now if I connect to the internet on this side, right, you'll see that I, I'll be able to connect to the internet, but it'll be the same thing if I try to go to Nintendo Online, it'll say it can't connect. So if I do... So see, it will connect to the internet, but this side won't allow you to go to the Nintendo eShop or anything. So. Like I said, it'll be blocked. But again, if you do anything on this set, right? So everything that we're doing right now, we're basically doing on the first option. We're just doing with stock OFW. So everything that, if you had something installed on the stock, you'll see it all here, but don't mess with anything. Don't touch anything. That's just, just leave this side alone. Do not use the middle option for anything except for updating. I cannot stress that enough. The only reason you should be in the pressing the second option is to update your stock firmware without uh, burning fuses so and uh, this won't get you banned so just using this to update will not get you banned it will just all it will do is just up install the new update without burning any fuses that way your NAND backup you can still use at any time so as long as your fuses aren't burnt no matter how many updates you do if you if something ever happens you can uh, use that backup to restore uh, your system back to that firmware but if at any point even once you went into system settings went to system and you pressed this option and you went through that you will need to make a whole new NAND backup so you sh you just might as well delete the other one because you don't want to accidentally revert to that because then your console will be bricked Sp again because the fuses will be burnt so that's the best way I can explain it guys uh, if you don't understand me just understand the, the the rules and you'll be fine just only use this to update the first option and never ever ever update the system through system update just never do that um so i'm thinking am i missing anything else okay so the third thing uh, or the last thing i want to show you guys is auto booting so say um like for me on my console i don't use the stock side i just i only use my the third option like the only uh reason i use my console is for single player games and uh to play my backed up games so my legally purchased backed up games on there without a uh as without the actual game cart so basically uh say you want to say you don't want it to go to the screen right say you don't want it to go to hikate every time you want it to automatically just go to uh, CFWEMUMMC. Uh, it doesn't make it permanent. There's a way that you can, uh, even if you select, if you auto boot to this, there's still, you can just uh, press the power and hold the volume uh, minus button and it'll bring you to this screen. If you don't hold the volume minus button while pressing power, they'll just go to whatever you set to auto boot. So to set an auto boot, all you need to do is press close. Um, actually, I kind of forget. Yeah, right here. So you click auto boot on. And then you select what you want auto boot to be. So if you select uh, CFW, EM, UMMC. So these are the three options. And now what will happen is watch. So if I press save options and I turn off the console. And now I turn it back on. It's not going to go to Hikate. It's just going to log straight into uh, CFW instead. So I just press power. And there you go. See, it uh, just skipped Hikate and automatically went to whatever I selected right there. So now say you want to go back, back to Hikate, you know, to do whatever. All you need to do is turn off the console. Power options, turn off the console. And then all you need to do is hold minus, press power once, and just keep holding minus. 
And there you go. Now you're in Hakate. See, and now you can go back and change your auto boot settings or boot into uh, your normal OS or whatever. So it's not permanent. So you can now go back to this and you can turn off auto boot and then disable and then save. So that's how you turn it off. So you click on it to turn it off. You click disable up here and then you press save options and that's it. And there's a, a, bunch, there's a few other things you can do. NYX options. So right here, this is how I make it so that it automatically goes to this screen. So a lot of people, the way that they're set up, it'll go to this screen and then you have to press launch and it goes here. But the way that you can change that is you can go right here and you can select where you want it to do. If you do, most people have the, by default, it's main menu, meaning every time you turn on your console, it'll come right here. So it'll go to this screen instead of this screen. I have it set up uh, so that it just goes to the launch screen because there's no other reason you should need to be here. So that's why I do launch is that screen and you press save. So that's basically it for this video, guys. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. Um, another thing. So a lot of people have asked me, say you download games online or whatever. Um, what's the easiest way to install it to your system if your uh, SD card is formatted to FAT32. So obviously FAT32 has a um, four gigabyte limit. So say you go online, right? And you download a game, like say uh, Breath, uh, Breath of the Wild, right? It's like, if it's probably like 10 gigabytes. So what will happen is if you try to take the SD card out and you plug it into your PC and you drag and drop the game, it'll say it can't copy because FAT32 um, format Oh, uh, FAT32 format file format only allows files uh, up to four gigabytes in size. So you can have multiple files, but none of those files can be more than four gigs, right? So the way to do that is the easiest way. Nobody's for some reason nobody's thought of this, but um, or at least every uh, nobody thinks of it uh, thinks things about it. But um, the simplest way is to just get a USB flash drive or an external hard drive, right? And format it to XFAT on your uh, computer, and then you can just drag the game. Uh, onto that USB drive, right? Uh, your NSP file, and you can either get a USB-C adapter and plug it directly into the switch, or if you don't have a USB-C adapter, you can plug the switch into the dock and use the USB port on the dock. And then uh, if you go into either tinfoil or gold leaf, uh, it'll pop up as HDD and the USB, and you can click on that, and then you can install that. So since it's XFAT, you can, there's no file size limit, so you can use a USB, so, Using a USB is the best way to install um, NSP files. So if you're downloading your games online, use a USB. Just format it to XFAT and then drag the file in there, plug it into your Switch in any way, dock or just directly. Go into either tinfoil or go into uh, gold leaf and um, you'll see HDD as an option and that's your SD card. And you can just click on the NSP, press install, and then once that's installed, you don't need the USB anymore. So, um, so say say you messed up, right? So say you screwed up. Say you screwed up and you went into Stock OFW and you updated the system, right? And you're uh, and you fried your um, uh, what is it? Sorry, I'm blanking out right now. I've been like two days without no sleep. Um, and you say you burn your fuses, right? So now what happens is say that NAND dump that was on your SD card, the one that you made on your computer, you need to delete that because you cannot use it. If you use it and you've updated normally, it will break your console. There'll be no going back, okay? And before you update stock OFW, you should always make a NAND backup. It takes a while, but it's always the safest. So even before using this to update this, make uh, I'm going to show you guys how to make a NAND backup so that just in case, so that you have it. So you can press close right here to make a NAND backup. And again, if you accidentally updated normally, if you accidentally updated this through system settings instead of using this, then you need to do this step. So all you need to do is delete the old uh, NAND backup on, uh, that that I sent you on your SD card and, so that you don't accidentally use it to restore. And then you need to go to tools and then you need to click this option, right? So that's the first option. And then it'll go through and it'll take this this one's like really quick and then this one takes a while depending so if, since it's if you have an oled it's like 60 gigs so it will take like 30 30 45 minutes for the entire backup to be done but if you ever need to make a backup you need to press these two options in order then once you once the once both bars get to 100 if you look on your uh, SD card, you should see a folder called backup and in there are all your uh, NAND backup files. Even if you don't know what to do with them, I'm just telling you to, uh, to take that backup and just keep it 
in case something happens in the future and then contact somebody that knows what they're doing like me before you mess with it so if you haven't if you uh screwed up somehow and you update it somehow and you don't know what to do don't panic and start doing random things okay don't start restoring from random nand backups do not just r randomly see a like you have a nand backup on your system and you don't know what uh, firmware it is and you just want to try it anyway before you do that make sure you make a uh, fresh backup that way say um you say say this was on uh, firmware 16 right and your nand backup is on 15 on firmware 15 if you flash it, say you go in here and you restore backup and you press uh, restore EMMC and you restore from that backup, which is only which is on firmware 15, but you update it to firmware 16 and burnt the fuses, what will happen is it will delete everything. So whatever this was on firmware 16, the, uh, even though it was working or whatever, it'll delete that. And then now making a NAND backup will be useless because you'll be making a backup of the, the destroyed files. So every, so before you make updates i always recommend you make a nand backup first just 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 in case okay so it's the safest way because without a nand backup if you somehow try to restore your stock ofw right if you if you mess up your em if you do it for this and you mess this up that's fine right because you can just delete this and re uh, reinstall but if you screw this up this is the data that's actually built into the chip inside the console if you mess this up and it's bricked you're you're screwed like your like your uh system is never going to turn on again so i think that's it for this video guys i know that was a long video but um you guys needed to know a bunch of stuff and i'm sick of explaining it to every single person one by one so i think that's basically all you need to know for now just to get started just to be safe and whatnot so um i think that's about it um let me also i, I haven't planned this video i'm literally doing this at like 10 a.m after like literally two days of no sleep so i just kind of I, i've been messaging people at least 20 people i messaged the same thing to about things included in this video so i got sick of that and i just making this video i don't care if it's professional i don't care if i stuttered i really don't care i'm just trying to get it over with so um if it helps you it helps you uh, if you can't understand me that's your problem like or you find me annoying go go to another video i don't care but um so i think don't mess with any settings that you don't know about you can change the theme color so right here if you wanted to change like the nyx options you can go to color theme right here and you can change this so see i can do save and reload close and now everything's in red so you can uh do that um, there's also tutorials on how to change the background this is the background i use on my consoles and that's the copy that i made to everybody's but there's a way um you can make your own and set it so I think that's it guys so um that's it for this um video explanation on how to use your nintendo switch i hope this helped you guys out and i will see you guys if you really like this video or it helped you or you're a supporter please 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 like this video and uh try to share it uh, i'm trying to get my youtube get it, uh, uh, youtube to you know be better than it is right now so it would really help if you guys left comments and left likes it would really help me out i put Obviously, I didn't put a lot of work into this video, but um, other ones I have. So if you want to see future ones, um, and if you have any questions, if you want me to make another video explaining a specific thing, um, I can do that. Just leave it in the comments, and I will do my best to make another video as fast as I can. So and with that, I will leave you guys to it. Have a good, Have a good rest of your day.